before the Spanish arrived, every textbook I have read talks about the Nahuatl as a people on the verge. Before the Spanish, the Nahuatl were on the brink of imminent insurrection, or dire strife, or unavoidable conflict, or whatever academic words you can string together to say shit was about to hit the fan. That is true. They were struggling politically to maintain order after having made so many enemies with their military conflicts. It bothered me that every talk of colonization, the colonization of Tenochtitlan, was prefaced by something like, while well, imperialism sucks, the native people were not doing so well, so eh. I partially attributed this as a method of erasure, a way to undermine the complexities of a society in order to downplay the impact of imperialism. Why is it? that in the 21st century, we are still centralizing talking points about the Nahuatl used to enable colonization. There's so much we don't know before the Spanish came. I imagine as to what we would have known had they never arrived. We do know the Nahuatl took land over land through war. We do know many other tribes were upset with their governance. Would someone have written a manifesto like Martin Luther and plastered across the temple? What advances would they have made? Would their beliefs eventually have led to their destruction? Would it have been militaristic hubris? How would the Calculis have processed all that change? When the Spanish did arrive, what really did happen? But we all, when all is said and done in war, what did they burn? said that Cortes defeated Montezuma and his people city by city. He gathered the, the aid of communities around <clears throat> Tenochtitlan. There are apparently some other few causes as well. The belief Cortes was Quetzalcoatl, that the Spanish engaged in total war rather than the rules, fo rule focused fighting than what we used to. Also guns, guns were really helpful. When the Spanish took over, like any imperialist nation, they, bore, they burned historical and sacred texts and introduced people to Catholicism. When forced with complete, fate, when faced with complete and utter destruction, eternal salvation sounds kind of nice. When faced with life and death, La Virgen de Guadalupe became a shepherding light to acquiesce to this new Jesus-y future. <laughs> oh, La Virgen. Her shroud carries the symbols of a forgotten people. To some, she is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Much like other colonized beliefs, the spiritual practices that were saved were interwoven with Catholic practices. Instead of a pantheon of gods and goddesses, we now have saints. I wonder if our pre-Hispanic ancestors are annoyed being welcomed back during Dia de los Muertos with uh, crosses and rosaries. There was no other place this transference happened more than in the missions. With the codices burned, the people defeated, missions became the place to continue the practices of cultural imperialism, effects that fundamentally guide much of our culture today. So much of what I grew up with identifying as connections to the past. Felt like nothing more than a false memory. What many people don't realize is that the memory we try to retain <coughs> has long since been bastardized. From the destruction of the Nawa and the numerous other indigenous people, erasure flattens the events of this time. Burning the codices granted a new history to be made. That's how powerful burning the text was, that it shaped the way Native people were viewed across a whole landscape. In the States, many of our own people still believe we are the only remnants 
of our indigenous ancestors, that because a border separates us, we don't have an explicit connection, that the only way to remember is to pray to a God that never belonged to us. The Mexican Revolution is where I argue the mythical Aztec warriors codified. No, the Aztec warriors were not men. But the warrior that pervades our iconography today is a lie founded on misogyny and Eurocentric ideals. Mexican now meant indigenous. Indigenous in Mexico now meant Aztec. As if with a big swoop of Catholicism and a bunch of horny Spaniards, bam, Mexicans popped out. <laughs> The caste system is but a footnote in our history. A system that's been continued to influence Mexican identity even after its end. It's no surprise that nationalism became an important aspect of Mexico. No longer would the Mexican people be under such an archaic system. No, they were now indigenous warriors reclaiming Aztlan. And yet, this new landscape was a home for the privileged elite to express their cultural hegemony over a colonized land. Aztecs were a point of national pride, no longer a people. As much as the revolution was about reclaiming native identity, it was also about homogenizing native identity. During the United Farm Workers Movement, La Virgen becomes a unifying emblem in the Chicano movement, Aslan becomes a unifying vision for those who were of Mexican descent, of course. People don't know Filipino people were an active group during the farm workers movement. People don't know the Chicano movement was supported heavily by non-Mexican identifying students, let alone black identifying students. And again, history is changed and flattened to fit a specific narrative. When I was 10, I called myself Mexican. When I was 13, I called myself Hispanic. At 15, I started identifying as a Chicano. And at 20, I switched out that O for a beautiful X. <laughs> I never felt like I fit it in culturally. I was a textbook pocho. I always knew we used to be indigenous, but I knew something didn't feel right about that. As, adult, as an adult, I thought I needed to prove my indigeneity. I realize now that's pointless and kind of selfish. It's time our identity serves to lift Native communities now. And I'm saying now. The past can't be changed. We have survived as a people, but it's time to recognize our role in the grander scheme of colonization and imperialism. As if our Native culture survives by us believing in La Virgen. <laughs> It's necessary we recognize that we were not the only people to be fucked over by the Spanish. When history is erased, you are made to believe that you are a long lost survivor, isolated by time. Mexican American, I was taught to believe my people were all that were left after imperialism swept the land. I was taught to believe my indigenous identity remained in the past and all that was left were burned codices. That ignorance is a symptom of colonization and my own privilege, the simple privilege to be seen. 
For most indigenous communities, the lack of space to exist both culturally and modernly has allowed racist tropes of Native people to go on. How do we enforce these tropes? How has our attachment to the past affected the way we treat our brethren now? If I've ever needed an answer in life, I've looked towards history to steer me to the truth. More often than not, I was left more confused and more uncertain. For as long as there have been winners and losers in war, has history been changed and manipulated to suit the means of those with the most power. History is valuable. As cemented are things are the things that have occurred, the facts of how we have gotten there is misinterpreted, erased, and changed. History is presented as stagnant, when in reality, our relationship to it is ever-changing. We cling to codices, scrolls, pictograms, stories, ceremonies, and literature to connect to the past. People even use their DNA, but even that can be read to fit a specific narrative. I wish with all my might I knew more of the traditions of our people and our ancestors. I get worried sometimes I'm not honoring them. <laughs> I feel like I'm calling to a past that's been too fractured to get an answer from. I wish I knew how to do a ceremony, right? I don't. <laughs> but maybe it's not for me to know. Maybe through my work will it help undo some of the damage done when they came and tried to burn our people away. Thank you.